Essay 1. On Libraries By Oliver Sacks Summary Summary On Libraries is written in praise of intellectual freedom, community work, and the ecstasy of serendipitous discovery. Among the geniuses of mind and spirit shaped and saved by libraries, Oliver Sacks was the great neurologist, author, and voracious reader. This essay is a personal essay about Oliver Sacks, who was a bookworm and fond of reading books in libraries. While growing up, Oliver Sacks lived in an oak-paneled library left to him by his father, a Hebrew scholar and admirer of Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen, 1828-1906. Books by Henrik Ibsen, poetry by his father's generation, and adventure and history books owned by his siblings filled the shelves of their family's library. He'd read Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, an English short story writer. He was captivated by the story of Mowgli, a fictitious character in the book. In the library, there was a separate cabinet reserved by his parents, where medical-related books were kept. His mother also possessed a large collection of literature, including works by American poet Emily Dickinson, English novelist Anthony Trollope, Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw, British author Rudyard Kipling. Kipling and poets William Shakespeare and John Milton, as well as poetry volumes she'd won in school contests. His mother, like him, loved literature. Since he was three or four years old, the library and books had been a fond memory for him. The library was stunning, but he also had a small lab where he could lose himself in literature and forget about food for hours at a time. He received a proper education in Willesden Public Library. St. Paul's School's Walker Library lacked chemistry books, so he went to the Science Museum Library with his schoolmaster and picked out what he needed from their collection of chemical books. When he was an adult, he delved into fields like astronomy and chemistry. He was an excellent student in libraries and a voracious reader who enjoyed the company of other bookworms as much as he did his own work. One of his favorite places to spend time as an adult was the Willesden Public Library in Willesden Green, London. He disliked passive reading in formal schools since he was an active reader who was used to studying on his own. When he was a student, he went to the Radcliffe Science Library and the Bodleian Library in Oxford. After reading Theodore Hook's work, he made the decision to write a biography on the author. A biography of him was published in the Bodleian Library after he had gathered documents from the British Museum Library. He studied old works like Gessner's Historia Animalium, 1551, Agassiz's writings, Charles Darwin, Sir Thomas Brown, and Jonathan Swift, as well as 17th and 18th century works by Samuel Johnson, David Hume, Alexander Pope, and John Dreden. The library at Queen's College, Oxford, was his favorite. He was awarded a full scholarship at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, where he had no trouble reading or writing. He formed a strong bond with a fellow reader, with whom he enjoyed reading and conversing. The year was 1965, and he had just moved to New York City, City, where he had a little apartment. Although reading and writing were tough in the flat, he nevertheless managed to complete portions of his book Migraine. He ran across another person looking for the same old book, Volumes of Brain from 1890. Oliver went on to other libraries, where he sat at a table surrounded by piles of books. In the 1990s, he saw that pupils were using computers instead of bookshelves to gather knowledge. The college decided to get rid of all the books since most of the students weren't utilizing them. A similar occurrence occurred at the Eckham Library as well as in libraries located in other countries. The vast majority of the books had been discarded. To him, this amounted to a murder or other serious offense. Th eradication or replacement of the books amounted to the eradication of centuries worth of knowledge. His heart was broken when he saw how many precious volumes had been destroyed by fire. Digital books lack the ability to wow and thrill the reader in the same way physical books do. There are certain novels that can't be replaced after they've been read. In the 1960s, most libraries had separate areas only for ancient books. These things have been analyzed in this essay. Hope you like the summary. Understanding the text. Answer the following questions. A. Where could the author be found when he was late for lunch or dinner? The author had a deep love for books and reading, spending most of their free time engrossed in them. 
the library was their preferred place, and they would often be found there, even if late for dinner. The oak-paneled library held a special allure, competing with their little lab as their favorite spot. Immersed in books, the narrator lost all sense of time. Early experiences of learning to read were tied to the library, nurturing, nurturing a lifelong passion for literature and providing a comforting escape into the world of imagination and knowledge. The library became a cherished haven, shaping the author's fondest memories and love for the written word. B. What are his first memories? As a child, the author's earliest memories revolved around books and libraries, influenced by their parents' love for reading, particularly their mother's fondness for books. The narrator's favorite room at home was the library, filled with bookcases and a study table. It held significant memories of their father's Hebrew scholarship and their parents' connection in an Ibsen society. The library's shelves contained the young poets of their father's generation, lost in World War I, and adventure, history books belonging to older brothers. In this enchanting room, the narrator discovered the Jungle Book, finding kinship with Mowgli's adventures, which sparked their own imaginative fantasies. The library became a place of wonder, fostering a strong bond with literature and family history, leaving a lasting impact on the narrator's formative years. See, why did he dislike school? School was generally disliked by the narrator, finding it hard to passively receive instructions. They preferred active learning, choosing what interested them and learning in their own way. Despite not excelling as a pupil, the narrator was a keen learner and found solace in the Will's Den Library and other libraries later on. The freedom to explore countless books and follow their curiosity allowed them to become their true selves. The library provided a sense of liberation, surrounded by thousands of books and like-minded readers, all on their individual quests. The special atmosphere and quiet companionship made the library a place of refuge and growth, where the narrator could immerse them themselves in knowledge and self-discovery. Theoretical and obligatory teachings methods of the school were not liked by the author. Studying becomes easier and matter of interest when student studies with his her own genuine interest, not by any obligation or instruction. Since, the school was not as he thought, he disliked it. D. What did he feel about the library? The library offered a tranquil and serene space for the narrator to study and contemplate their studies. The silence provided the perfect environment for focused learning. With tens of thousands of books at their disposal, the library granted them the freedom to explore and select any subject of interest. Roaming the library's aisles, they had the liberty to delve into various topics that intrigued them. Moreover, the narrator was not alone in their pursuit of knowledge, they were joined by fellow readers who shared the same passion for learning. The library became a sanctuary where they could immerse themselves in books and engage in intellectual pursuits with like-minded individuals. It fostered an atmosphere of curiosity, growth, and quiet companionship, making the library an indispensable part of the narrator's quest for knowledge and self-discovery. E. Why was he so biased about sciences especially astronomy and chemistry? From the childhood, author was keen of reading books in science field because it was the curious and ponderous subject for him. Because science was his field of study, he had a strong predisposition for fields like astronomy and chemistry. Focusing our research on a particular topic is necessary to get a broad understanding of that topic, which is why the author studied astronomy and chemistry to gain more specialized knowledge. One cannot possibly read all of the books in a li library's collection since they cover a wide range of topics and abilities. So, he narrowed down his field of study. F. Why did he become so fascinated by Hook? The narrator developed a deep fascination with Hook, drawn to his exceptional talent in satire and opera. Living in the early 19th century, Hook gained admiration from the theater and music communities for his humor and impressive improvisational skills in music. His ability to skillfully blend satire and opera captivated audiences, making him a beloved figure in the entertainment world of his time. The narrator's interest in Hook was likely inspired by the unique combination of wit, musical prowess, and comedic genius that set him apart as a remarkable artist of his era. Hook's contributions to both satire and opera left a lasting impact on the artistic landscape, garnering him widespread recognition and admiration from his contemporaries and generations to come. G. Describe library at the Queen's College. 
The Queen's College Library is a revered Baroque building in Oxford. In addition, the 17th century Upper Library is available to students as a reading space. The renovation was required to maintain the space's historical importance and to offer readers with a pleasant and engaging environment. The restoration, initially intended to be part of the library's expansion, was completed between June 2013 and January 2014. It is now cleaner, brighter, and more inviting to study. H. Why did the students ignore the bookshelves in the 1990s? During the 1990s, students began to overlook the traditional bookshelves in favor of electronic gadgets and devices. The widespread availability of PDFs and electronic ver versions of textbooks enabled students to access their required reading materials conveniently and digitally. As technology advanced, many students found it more convenient and practical to carry their electronic devices, such as laptops, tablets, or e-readers, which house their entire collection of books. This shift towards digital resources made the physical bookshelves less appealing and seemingly less necessary for academic pursuits. The convenience and portability of electronic gadgets offered a new way of accessing information, leading students to favor the digital realm over traditional printed books found in the bookshelves. I, why was he horrified when he visited the library a couple of months ago? During a recent visit to the library, the narrator was shocked and dismayed to find the shelves, once brimming with books, now completely empty. Over the past few years, most of the books had been discarded, and to the narrator's surprise, there was little resistance or objection to this act. The emptiness of the library struck the narrator deeply, as if witnessing the erasure of centuries' worth of valuable information and knowledge. They likened this loss to a murder, feeling that a heinous crime had been committed against the vast reservoir of human understanding contained in those books. The incident left the narrator feeling a profound sense of loss and grief, as the erasure of the books represented the disappearance of a rich literary and intellectual heritage that had been carefully preserved over time. Reference, reference to the context. A. The author says, I was not a good pupil, but I was a good listener. Justify it with the textual evidences. Oliver Sacks enjoys reading a wide range of genres at the library since it's free. He was not a fan of learning in a passive manner in which, in school, he must complete all of the teacher's homework after the lectures. Oliver Sacks writes in the article, I wasn't a good student, but I was an excellent learner. He says so, because he was never interested in doing as per the instructions of school. He says so because, he was not like the students defined by the academic terminology. But, it does not mean he was arrogant. He used to study by choosing books from libraries that interest him. To do well in school, one must have a positive relationship with their instructors. He or she is required to attend courses on a regular basis and follow the directions of the instructors. Oliver Sacks, on the other hand, was not that kind of student. That is why, author says himself as a good listener, than a good student. B. A proverb says, nothing is pleasanter than exploring a library. Does this proverb apply in the essay? Explain. When you go into a library and see other people studying, it gives you the feeling that you should be doing the same thing. They provide a more serene atmosphere than the average house. In addition, the library is a great place to go if you need a specific reference book. Not everyone has a dedicated study room in their house, and there may be other distractions su such as regular visits from family members. Also, you won't be bothered much by anybody around. Library does not have TVs and mobile phones, which are the major distractions. That's why library is the pleasanter than anything else. A library's vast collection of books and periodicals covers a wide range of subjects. Oliver Sacks particularly cherished the library's meditative atmosphere and the company of other bookworms. In fact, he is an avid reader who spends a lot of time in libraries. His favorite room in his house was the oak-paneled library. He opted out of going to school and instead spent his time reading in public libraries. Reading books offers a bookish person as much pleasure as anything else. He aspires to have a desk in a library, with a stack of books in front of him at all times. He grew up in a house filled with bookworms who liked to read. Walter Savage Lander discusses the joy that may be found in a library by anybody who is interested in studying. 
he began reading from his own personal library at home. That's why, there's nothing more enjoyable than browsing a library, a lovely quote, is completely relatable to the essay. See, are there any other services that you would like to see added to the library? A library should not be only a store of books. Time is changing. Various technologies are evolving. The way students study and learn has been changed, so we also need to adapt to changing technology in the libraries and learning systems as well. For example, a braille system could be introduced in the libraries to assist blind students studying their studies. We can also use various ICT materials like informative TVs and DVDs which students can use to better visualize the things. Also, the Internet Wikipedia system should be added to the library, so that students can find their desired things via the Internet rather than searching for the books on the bookshelves. Similarly, a simple cafe can optionally be added, added outside the library so that whenever the learners get hungry, they can have some food. Reference beyond the text. A. Write an essay on libraries and its uses for students. Library is a gathering place for people of all interests to study books of all genres on their own. Student may gain information by borrowing books from the library. The library may be an invaluable resource for those who cannot afford to purchase a book, particularly students who cannot afford to buy a book. Private, public, and government libraries all exist. The library serves a variety of functions and disseminates information. The library is the beating heart of the educational system and for the students. In order to avoid desire and temptation, people should stay in contact with libraries. Libraries play a critical role in unlocking the secrets of the universe by storing vast amounts of information. A book takes us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of understanding. Libraries, more than any other medium, are the most effective method of disseminating knowledge. Many students go to the library to do research or look for information on current events or social problems. For the objectives of education and knowledge acquisition, li libraries are vital. Students may develop good reading and study habits by using libraries, which serves to enrich the classroom experience. Libraries can even help students develop a feeling of accountability. Libraries are just too cool for words. Once history books teach us from the errors of the past, we can avoid them in the future. Aside from that, it will come as a shock to the younger generation to learn that not everything can be found on the Internet. Although the Internet makes libraries more accessible, it does not entirely replace them. It's also been said that giving a kid a book as a present is the best thing a parent can do for them. It's possible that the Internet has many errors that weren't noticed at the time. It provides all potential answers to academic problems. Newspapers and articles from local publications are often available in libraries to keep patrons updated on current happenings. With the help of the library, one's ability to focus is greatly enhanced. In addition, libraries are places where we may meet others who share our interests and so contribute to the development of our social network. When a student begins consulting reference materials, their grades increase. Modern libraries provide their patrons with much more than just books, they now provide CDS, DVDs, and even e-books. Many contemporary libraries now provide online guest lectures and seminars by eminent philosophers on fascinating subjects. People have lost sight of the importance of libraries in the era of television, computers, and the internet. The majority of libraries have now made their free Wi-Fi services available to job seekers so they may take use of the free internet access. The government's role in modernizing libraries may be observed. They provide digital libraries and other services all around the world. B. Do you have any public library in your locality? If so, do the people in your community use it? Give a couple of exam examples. Yes, we do have a public library in our society. There is no reason not to. Libraries have played a critical part in the development of the civilized society we live in now, and will continue to do so as we repair and extend our capacity for learning and information acquisition. As a result, learning and libraries are inseparable in my community. Because the technology we use now isn't available to everyone in society, libraries are vital. In libraries, reading sessions for students and the community are organized, as are book sales, library groups, 
and other activities that serve to mold society and make it better and more educated. A library is a location where you may discover information on topics you're interested in learning about or are required to know about. It's also a location where you may relax and have fun, hopefully. There's a good chance you'll make new friends. For local people who need it, a library is essential because they use computers to accomplish things like pay bills or compose emails while they do their schoolwork or study, via the computers available in libraries. Some people are fortunate enough to be able to accomplish such things at home, but not everyone is. While technology may fail from time to time due to power outages or worn-out components, libraries remain open and are much more dependable. Because libraries continue to function as a physical repository for information and knowledge in our society, they are vital institutions to have in place. In order for any information to be uploaded into the technology, it must first be manuscript and then stored in libraries just in case information is lost during transportation. That is why, libraries are inseparable in my community. Best of luck.